What's going on, my fellow reef builders? I'm Jake Adams, and I've just come to the studio this afternoon, this weekend afternoon, to just find that everything is just looking so beautiful, so perfect. All the glass is clean, all the glass is clean inside, it's clear, the water's clear, the corals are open and puffy, and with eight display tanks and seven supporting tanks uh, they all the lighting comes on at all different times so it's really hard to find like that perfect window of time where i can give you a tour of the entire uh, reef builder studio but man i don't think there's ever been a better time than right now i've been uh really hands-on with the corals with the fish and everything so um, yeah thanks for joining me on this video I'm going to show you as much of the studio as possible um, I'm gonna give a little bit of a kind of a flyby of each tank and each system so if you have any questions that you want to see answered either in the comments or in like a future follow-up video about that particular system this will be a really good time to uh, put those in there so let me just uh, show you what we're working with here at the studio it's uh, it's a very different day from what we had um, a couple days ago with the, uh, the extreme snow uh, the freak snow event but um, as you can see it's super clean in here super bright super well lit we got a lot of sunshine coming on the windows and um, it's just a really fun place to be so um, if you don't mind I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys that tour and show you a little bit of everything all at once so um, the fish system is doing very well. So apologize for the reflections because it is a, a warm day. Fish system is doing well. Um, some of these fish have really have done their time here in the uh, in the fish hotel. There's a video specifically on that system um, if you want to know how I've kept my fish for a long time. But one of the next systems I'm going to be setting up is the 128 gallon pro clear aquatics rimless tank very excited about this system um, because like i think i've mentioned when i did the setup video for this tank this is going to be purely a fish tank and we're going to focus on the things that makes fish happier and healthier and nothing to do with corals no dosing no calcium reactors um, yeah it's going to be all about the fish while I am over here, let me go ahead and show you the flagship reef tank. Now this is a very sad tank for having been set up for oh right about eight months or so but i have a really really good uh excuse and this is going to be a full-on video of its own because i messed up a little bit and i got a nice nice lawn of carpet uh, of hair algae and i found a product that killed it without me really doing anything you know other than reducing the nutrients reducing the lighting um, uh, but definitely this tank uh, the one thing that slows things down here at the studio is wanting to bring you guys along for the ride and you know setting up to do videos for uh, for you guys so um, so flagship reef it's doing great honestly all it needs is like a water change and like a bunch of corals but i'm going to worldwide corals for the grand opening uh first weekend of november so if you're in the orlando area make sure to come out and see that because i'm going to be shopping for some coral frags and uh, finding a bunch of stuff to just put in there all right right next to it is the red sea reefer tank this has been primarily a montipora aquarium it's funny how there's not that many corals in here but the few corals um, are kind of a dominating orange cap and a darker red uh, setosa so they're doing really really good had a new debron problem with this tank. What we decided to do is take all the problem montes or unattached montes and put them over in one of the coral flats over there. I'll show you um, so we could deal with them uh, individually. Recently did a video uh, on the water vets, but I figured this is the, a complete tour of the Reef Builder Studio. I'll show you uh, where a lot of the magic happens. So there's the water vats I did in the video. There's uh, my trusty little bandsaw right there, right behind me. Um, I wanna thank everybody for watching and commenting and liking the uh, gold torch fragging video. That was, uh, 
kind of a spur of the moment deal because I knew I wanted to frag that coral, but like, I didn't know how it was gonna turn out and it was actually quite hard walking around with the camera in one hand and the coral in the other hand. And, uh, but it turned out really good, really fun. And um, I, think, I think I'm gonna do some more videos like that because you guys really seem to enjoy it. And it's kind of one of those fun things to bring you along with. Um, oh man, the lighting right now bouncing off the ground is just like perfect for my complexion. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, this is the workshop area. This is where I keep all the things. Uh, look out for Reef Stock Denver and Australia news coming uh, up soon for 2020. Man, I got, I got a lot of stuff to work with and play with. I do love it in here. There's my, my little fragging area. I don't know if this is gonna be permanent, but I am trying to keep all the cutting tools, gluing tools, discs and tiles in this particular area. And I got to, the three sinks really makes up in keeping things clean a lot easier. This is kind of what I've been calling the review bench. This is where all the new stuff goes. So what is coming up on the docket? Um, I've got a tank, I'm gonna put the Spectra 200 on. This is a light that you can control in the spectrum, but you can actually control the depth to adjust the spectrum, which is really cool. Got the new uh, forever in development uh, Vertex Cerebra 7, looks exactly like the Cerebra 2, so I don't know what happened there. But I am going to be installing this as a uh, bona fide monitor. The brand new Hydra 64 HDs. I'm gonna show you the tank those are gonna go on to. And I think one of my next project videos is gonna be setting up the automatic Destaco 2 calcium reactor, along with the macroalgae reactor from Tunzi, uh, specifically to suck up the CO2 from there so it doesn't uh, crash my pH. Um, for those of you that are inclined, I have repotted uh, all the plants that I had from the beginning into white pots and made kind of like a little rocket base uh, stand for them out of PVC. There's a fiddle leaf fig here and I uh, got a couple bonsais there up in the window. The uh, Norfolk pines are doing really good after I split them up and here you can kind of get a good look at the uh, at the, the, the stand that I make and I can make these like super short or a little bit taller. One more tree and we'll get back to aquarium stuff. Um, so here's a beautiful uh, miniature Schefflera bonsai um, that I picked up several months ago. And I'm telling you, man, once the humidity got up here in the studio, um, all of the, the plants, which really helped to green up the space, um, have done really, really well. All right, um, this is like my white whale right here. The 400 gallon, eight foot planted aquarium. Um, it's eight feet long, 30 inches by 30 inches. It's got a steel frame top. It's got a PVC bottom that is already drilled and it has a steel framed uh, stand. So all the wood you see there is a skin. I wanna, I wanna personally, I wanna personally thank Jerry and everyone at Planet Aquarium for their patience. Uh, they sent me this tank. 10 months ago, it's still not going, I apologize, but I'm gonna make sure this tank lives up to the build quality that you presented. Um, I think I finally got all my pieces in a row to finally put together the closed loop on the bottom. That is really the only thing that is stopping me from really going at this tank hard. Um, but basically what I'm gonna be trying to do is, um, it's drilled for one inch bulkheads. So I'm going to drill it out more for one and a half inch bulkheads and then route it out a little bit so the um, bulkheads fit in perfectly. So once I get the two Vectra L2, the dual closed loop installed on the bottom, which is, it's gotta be so perfect because it's gonna be the bottom of a 400 gallon tank, you guys. Um, once that is nailed down, it's gonna be full steam ahead for that tank. Alrighty, so on this side, this is kind of like the display area that's uh, kind of really gotten well fleshed out here in the last several days. Um, this is a future 500 gallon tank. I am going to put a monster fish in here. This tank is like six feet long, three feet high. Um, it's gonna need a complete overhaul, but there's gonna be, that's gonna be the second pet fish tank, but I am not allowed to set that up until the, the other fish tank is set up, until the 400 gallon reef tank is set up. And and the giant cube. So let's uh, let's uh, take a look down this road right here and then wrap it up with the three kind of coral holding flats. This is my rainbow fish tank. These are my babies. These are my homies. I've had these at home for a long, long, long time. But once I got the studio set up, um, I just, you know, once I got home, I would just kind of throw some food in there and not really, uh, 
have the time to love them or enjoy them. So they're in a 150 gallon acrylic tank, a couple bonsai trees on top of them. Um, but these are my homies and I probably will never subject you to a video of those guys, but the, they make me feel a little bit more at home when I'm here at the studio. Now for these three tanks, you have seen the videos of these tanks before and they are pretty much, very much ready for an update. I have to say that, um, you know, these tanks were a little bit unusual for me because I set them up almost like, just like a finger snap, right? So one night, Evan and I, uh, we aquascaped the three tanks all at once. Then one day I put all the corals in one tank, the next day I put all the corals in the other tank, and then the other tank. And I think I tweaked with them just like a little bit after reef stock, but for the most part, I actually, uh, I just left them alone. I didn't really do anything specific and they have thrived, but it is time for me to kind of get in there, just kind of get my arms in there. Um, it's kind of funny that having these, uh, these well-fitting mesh tops that keep the fish from jumping out also kind of keep me from going in because it's just like one more step to take something off to get into the tank to do something um, but these tanks are ready for a little bit of manicuring right they need to be groomed a little bit some of the corals need to be cut some of them need to be moved a little bit but all of these tanks are overdue for their own feature video and I think all of them are just about ready to kind of get the lights swapped out because uh, the lights are on there have worked really, really well. But you know, it's time to see what uh, the next crop of, of aquarium lights can do. So let me show you these a little bit one by one. And this is a good time to kind of like formulate your questions about what you want to see on the featured videos of these aquariums. So this is a Innovative Marine EXT Aquarium, rimless tank, external overflow. We've got two Hydra 52s on top, as well as the brand new um, Illumagic Vitamini LED supplemental actinic strip light. <laughs> Holy crap. Say that several times fast. Um, this tank, it was my first favorite. Just, you know, those soft corals, they just grow so fast and they bloomed and they opened up. And um, some of these are tiny little frags that I've been nursing from tank to tank to tank and finally was able to put them in a, in a spot. And um, there's just a whole lot of goodness. So pretty much all of this is soft coral. And then here, I've just got, got this weird turban area and Duncan uh, patch on this side. Um, so maybe I can find another place for these stony corals and let the soft corals expand into here. Next door is the uh, kind of like the last tank that you guys saw. This is the uh, Euphilia dominated reef tank. We have a pair of conspic angelfish from Poma Labs that are still doing well. I mean, they've been here for like a year. Um, they've both grown a little bit. We've also got a blue line angel right there who's always at the front. I like how the conspics are a little bit more reserved. They, they, that's what they do right there. They kind of hang around the rock. And it's a good thing that I haven't been here all day because um, everybody's ready to get fed. But let's see if we can get a little closer look. Hey buddies, I love it. They, like you get to see them, but they're not like um, exhibitionists, I would say. Like whereas the blue line, he's just like right there, always out in front, just feed me, feed me, feed me. So this is the Euphilia bombing. Sorry, this is the entire Euphilia tank and I have a, a related a galaxic coral in the back. There's the, uh, the gold torch that I fragged up the other day. And um, what I need to do is take most of these torch corals and put them on this bommie and then take all of these euphilias and kind of move them over, probably remove the lobos that were put in there pretty much just as a filler. But I need to isolate the torches because they have, you know, a potent sting and I still have like six to eight inches uh, front to back of room in the back to put things on the, the back wall. Um, so this is an innovative marine 75 gallon rimless with the external overflow box and um, a pair of uh, HM Electronics Cetus 2 little micro puck LEDs. These are Bluetooth, they're great lights and what I like about them is they're not the most colorful as you might see. There's not crazy, crazy pop going on in this tank, but um, they're bright enough to keep the euphilias happy, but not grow too much algae. And then next door, this is a 40 gallon Innovative Marine rimless with the EXT overflow. And I've got the Kessel A360X with the wireless program and control dongle. Um, this was kind of my least favorite tank. 
and um, but it's really kind of come around. I put all the smaller, more delicate fish in here. There is no power head. There's just the return flow. Hey, look at that. I don't have the side glass like completely clean, but you see that that's, uh, that's 10 feet of reef tanks, you guys. 10 feet. But this is the LPS tank. Um, I think the next coral I want to cut up is the Acan Pachycepta because um, that guy's got a great story and this is kind of, almost kind of like my Acan uh, and definitely the LPS tank. And I've got all the little fish in here that I definitely need a different lens for. So uh, those are the first three tanks that I set up here at the studio. And um, the tanks in here are doing so well. It's almost time for me to start considering like um, setting up a setting up a uh, like a little mobile desk. I want to put a because my desk is over over in the office area, but now it's occurred to me like I want to put a desk that I can move around and while I'm blogging, I can park it in front of the softy tank for a couple days or in front of this tank for a couple days or even just right here in the center of the room and just kind of always be looking around just so I can have a really good look at everything. All right, so that is all the display tanks, but as you might no, there's three more very large coral tables. Um, these are kind of like support areas. This first one is kind of decorative. I'm treating this a little bit more like a, a, like a Laguna uh, coral flat, but the others are really for working for when the corals first come in to frag them up. So let me give you a closer look at those. So we're gonna go a little bit backwards, just a naming. This is coral flat three. So this is where I put the cleanest corals. This is kind of like the last spot that the corals go to before they are considered um, for going out there. So they, they kind of go in succession where they'll come in here first. It's kind of like the fresh corals or used corals or wild corals that I get. They can go in here without dipping. And then as they get cleaner and cleaner, I'll move them to different sections around here and either they'll go over there for more intensity and light or they'll come over here um, because they're almost really, really clean and kind of ready to go to um, some of the displays out over there. Um, the good case in point is these mangroves. You know, these things started out as little pods, but like they're really kind of starting to get some, some size and some height to them and really kind of starting to shade. So it's almost time for me to uh, figure up a little bit more permanent solution for those guys. Um, got a nice little patch of biota leather corals right there, huge variety. Got uh, long polyp leather there. Um, I love sun polyps, they are absolutely my super favorite of all the zoanthids. That's the only variety that I clean, that I collect. What else do we have? Um, this is a beautiful um, kind of delicate anemone. This thing is so red with uh, green tips and uh, light colored perimeter. And um, my burgeoning, uh, what would you call this? I would call this. This, this is my, my shroom corner, right? So I put all the shrooms in here, a little bit low light, low flow, and actually all the detritus tends to build up here so they can eat that. Let's go around the side and take a look at this beautiful, beautiful patch of clams because I love these guys. This is the Ritteri right here. It's not looking huge today. I think I've been feeding him, so he needs to poop. Oh yeah, a couple more torch corals over there. That's one of the frags that I made. But um, I put this guy <laughs> in a cage basically so he can kind of do laps. He gets lots of flow, lots of uh, light, and he's got one clownfish to kind of keep him company. And yeah, as you, as you can see here, a little bit of a hodgepodge of things. Um, I've got a bunch of my soft coral frags right there. But really my favorite part of this side is the uh, the giant clam nursery. So let's see what do we have in here. We've got some hippopus clams. We've got two Anoa clams. Oh, sorry, sorry, Ningaloo clams for Western Australia. We've got three very fast growing Gigas clams. Let me see if I can get a little close up on these guys. So yeah, my gigs are growing so super fast, you guys. Like these guys are, these clams are just about ready to get moved out to some permanent displays because they're gonna get big fast. Um, got some lovely, lovely ORA Maximus, two tiger stripes, three super blues. These are the Biota Mimosa clams. And I don't know if it was a different batch or just like genetics, but the blue ones are definitely smaller and growing slower than the brownish pinkish ones. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the blue ones and put them in their own tile so they don't get crowded out. All right, so that's uh, that's mostly Coral Flat 1 right there. This, uh, this system has four uh, Radeon Gen 4 Pros. And this is the second Coral Flat 
Uh, you may remember this one from where the torch carol coral came from. These are the rapidly uh, increasing in health patch of uh, Australian acros. So much color in there and you just can't capture it by a, a drive-by situation. Here is, um, that's the funky, funky, raggedy toadstool leather. I know it looks like a devil's hand, but it's not. It's totally a toadstool. And uh, it just looks like a piece of mop in some ways. If you look right there on the edge, you can see the lobes are actually from the crown. So it's not like branching fingers. Um, and this is probably the less uh, uh, photogenic tank, the least photogenic tank in here. Like I said, this is where the corals first come in and then they settle in and then I take care of them and then they move out somewhere else. And then running this tank, we've got four Radeon Gen 4 Pros with diffusers, um, a Tunzi skimmer that's off right now. I should mention that I turn off the flow for that tank, for all the tanks right now, so we can do the top downs. And I have a, a Ciche, well, I've got Aqua B pump over there, basically driving the whole thing, a CJ pump over here, driving the whole thing, and a Vectra M2 over there, driving this whole thing. So uh, give me one second to just uh, get the color and exposure right in this tank. I'll be right back. Well, that was easy. One of the uh, white balance uh, presets, custom presets that I made. It was uh, the right color for this tank, but this is primarily the acro tank. Oh. Oh, looks like my gyre pump just went back on. So I need to uh, go ahead and pause that for a second. It's so nice to have every all the controllers like really, 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 really accessible. So this is the highlight tank. I call this the Acro tank. It's got six Radeon Gen 4 Pros. Um, they're, they're kind of angled inwards in a little bit just to really just punch that light down in there. But since I have a variety of corals, I'm still not yet able to really push it um, as much as I'd like. This tank has definitely become kind of a, a hodgepodge of different corals. We've got some stylos, lots of acros, um, Montes. This is a funky Palau Estrella collected in Solomon Islands. There's a, a bunch of very colorful frags, more frags over here. Um, some a different variety of tort that I collected in Solomon Islands is my <laughs> some of my lengths I cap. One, two, three, four. So these really, really need to get groomed. This is a first tank that I kind of like need a, a do over because it was the first tank that I did. So I just kind of threw everything in here and I've had a battle Valonia and Aptasia and all kinds of different things. But um, otherwise it's on the upswing. So I just kind of want to clear it out and start it over. And man, one thing I really want to show you most of all is my Palau crochet clamps. Those things are absolutely awesome. Just totally next level. I got those from Biota several years ago. They are among the most colorful Mandarin crochet clams that I have ever seen. And last but not least, this is almost like everybody's favorite tank here at the studio, is this Christmas tree worm tank, the one tank I forgot to clean the glass on. But as you can see, the worms are super huge. There's not, I, I can't tell if there's more of them. Not, I don't know, I haven't seen more of them, but they are definitely bigger. And there was one rock here where the coral mostly died off and it's got a lot of Aptasia. So it's actually in the back right now where the uh, Aptasia eating file fish can do some work on it. But otherwise, one of the next videos is going to be moving this innovative marine, I think it's a 30 gallon EXT tank with the matching stand over there by its brothers. It's gonna go right there in front of the sump. And that will be when I'm able to uh, put the Dostaco reactor and the Tunzi macroalgae reactor on there. All right, one more little, no, two more. Two more little ornamental tanks to show you guys because I'm trying to show you the whole studio and I could talk about each tank for 10 minutes. And if I did that, this would be a two hour long video. So ain't nobody got time for that. So let me show you two more systems. Very, very different. This is my freshwater tank. I love this tank, you guys. It's actually kind of dark um, because I used uh, dark colored plants. I really wanted to go for uh, mostly red sword plants 
in here. And while the new leaves are red, um, they get kind of dark and brown as they get older. Um, and that goes for these front swords, which started out this small and they ended up this big. So um, the primary fish in here is four large wild autumn angelfish that have been growing for several years. They do not like having a camera in their face. Um, but yeah, I have some plans to, to switch around for this tank and having a freshwater tank here is just, you know, kind of a kind of a nice contrast to all the blue lighting um, that you see here in the studio. And um, it's just kind of that sentimental value, you know, kind of just like the plants. It really helps to change things up. And last but certainly not least, this is almost like a deja vu aquarium for me because this is the Rainbow Basslet. And uh, this is another uh, donation from TSM Corals. Big thanks to Don and the team for taking care of this fish for me, quarantining it for me. I still put it in my own quarantine tank because it's right next to my desk here. And as you'll see, it's a, uh, it's a standing desk. So when I have it actually at the, uh, the seated level, um, basically this is like almost like my desktop aquarium. I can see right over the edge of it. And uh, I had a tank almost identical to this just kind of like a semi empty just one cute little ornament with a rainbow basslet uh, quarantine tank the first time I had one of these about five years ago so that's why he's there by himself just so I can get a, a better look at him so whew, man starting to get a little bit winded but uh, big thanks to everybody for tuning in as you can see if I'm not if I'm not putting out like massive loads of videos or if I haven't been, it's because we've been building this out, been building out this entire, uh, oh man, this is a temple. This is a temple of reefing. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of, a lot of, deeper updates to, to, to share with you guys about these different tanks. I really want to bring you along on basically, uh, basically I, I just need to put corals in there. I just need to do a little water change and put corals in there. Same thing with some of these tanks. I just need to get my hands in there and just kind of, just kind of refine things a little bit. There's certain uh, corals I put in there just as fillers because I didn't have that many. And, um, and yeah, I, I think it's time to put, uh, you know, some hydras in that tank and maybe some primes on that tank and you know just like kind of switch things up a little bit which is what the studio was intended to be so i know you probably have a lot of questions about individual tanks and corals and animals and, and equipment so this is a really good video to get some answers on those or if i feel like a verbal answer is not going to be as good as including it in a future video um again this is now it's kind of like a wish list time for what you want to know about these tanks about the studios about how we do it and um keeping up with uh, 16 tanks is a lot of work but man this is my life I, I i love it and as long as i stay on top of it it doesn't get out of hand which is why now i'm able to uh you know really get on building the uh, pro clear aquatics fish tank and the planet aquarium's uh, 400 gallon flagship reef tank so thanks everybody for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this new look at the uh never to be completed but one year old reef builder studio the surprising thing is it's turned out almost exactly like how i imagined and certain things actually turned out even better so i'm having a lot of fun uh you know my personal gratification on working with the tanks is the primary fuel but if there's a secondary fuel it is bringing you guys along with it so um you guys help me out a little bit you know i don't ask for a lot but but share this with somebody uh, that you think would really needs to know or wants to would enjoy some of these videos we're almost at 60,000 subscribers but i don't count subscribers as strongly as I do the engagement from you guys and meeting you all at reef aquarium conferences and fish stores and all over the world. So for the fifth or 15th time, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Put your comments down below, hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. We got a lot of videos on the way and I hope you enjoyed this updated 2019 tour of the Reef Builder Studio. I'll catch you guys in the next, uh, next episode. Later.